because I'm very Southern, as you can tell. Um, we don't say, we don't put everything down nice. We just say, bless your heart. <laughs> That's what my principal says all the time. Bless it, their heart. It um, sounds nice. It does, but you know. <laughs> Jessica, obviously. Uh, I am a middle school special ed teacher and I do English resource. So I'm like um, their their normal English teacher, but just in a small group setting. Um, I've been teaching for about 11 years and I have my undergrad in elementary education. I never thought I'd be a middle school special ed teacher. I always thought I'd be the cute little elementary education teacher. That did not happen. Um, I went into special ed and then I got my undergrad from Kentucky in elementary education. I got my master's from Alabama and then I got into the wonderful world of instructional technology through my ADS and became Google obsessed. I got to do the Google Innovator Academy back in New York this past October. So just like head full first <laughs> to the world of educational technology for my innovation project is collaboration and so that's what I'm really big on like collaboration between teachers collaboration between students and teachers I'm like that kind of stuff so that's me in a nutshell and then I have a two-year-old who is crazy and I'm very sparkly if you can see the sparkles yes she, she did my makeup yesterday it was very pretty so um why don't you tell me about like what do you have so far for your project? Because I know it involves collaboration. And then, you know, a lot of times you don't get to pick who you collaborate with. Um, you just kind of get put together. And then by the end of December, you either want to divorce or be happily married. Because you have another person that you can share responsibilities with and and specifically like i have a friend of mine who she's one of my best friends we taught we co-taught english for two years eighth grade ela and her last name is Wright, and mine is reed so we would be read and write girl we got a half crowd going and we have a t-shirt and we did a christmas card together this past year so like we're those people but like so that's like the really good collaboration where I had a teacher look at me and she was like I don't want you here okay I'm just gonna go sit on this side but then when the superintendent would walk in this isn't the district I'm in now it's another district she would be all about it you know to put on the show for the thing and so I think it gives the kids more chance to succeed in the classroom especially coming from the sped perspective because there's a reason the kids have an IEP. There's a reason that there's two people needed in the classroom. So, um, I don't know. My one, one of my biggest tips is to always work together and like plan together. And that's actually what's kind of coming up with my mentor pro or like my innovator project. I'm trying to come up with what I call the collaborative prenup. So it would be like a document that you would you would sign to you would sign kind of like a prenup before marriage, beginning of the year. Everybody decides who's going to do what. Even like you're going to plan the warm ups for this week. Like I'm talking like nitty gritty. You get everything out. Everybody signs it. The principal or administrator is kind of like the pastor and signs off on it or the attorney, whatever. And then when you have an issue come up, you pull out the prenup. And everybody knows this is what's expected and this is what to do. And it could even work for like teachers and um, paras or paraprofessionals or aides, you know, vice versa. Um, like I've had, I've been in a classroom situation before where I taught at a behavior school and it was students with severe behavior disorders. And so I didn't have any co-teachers. I had aides and I had some great like pair pros, but then I had a couple who were just like turds and would be on their cell phone, like when they're not supposed to. Be. I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't have said that word, but no, it's great. But you know what I mean? They were just like not doing what they're supposed to. But if you have a document that says boom, 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 
I mean, it's just like, if you think about teaching, we sign contracts every year. I just, something that can hold somebody accountable because that's really what comes down to it. My main concern in a collaborative classroom is if two kids, two teachers are working and you have a student who is so below grade level that they can't, that they don't make any progress and there's two teachers there, there's something wrong. When you, and this might be like a regional thing, but when you say collaboration, you mean specifically like team teaching, right? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like it could be any type of collaboration. It could be, okay. um, I'm used to just being co-teaching or collaborative teaching That's, yes. with the team teaching. Yes. It could even be, it doesn't have to necessarily be like a special ed and a general ed. It could literally it could be two general ed teachers working together in the classroom, you know, depending on your situations. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we don't really do co we call it more collaborative teaching. It gives you a little more flexibility than co-teaching. Gotcha. Unfortunately, I'm an elective teacher, so I don't get to have a helper, which yeah. I honestly like the idea of it. I am in love with, I wish that I had extra help, but you did, you hit something that does apply to me, which is working with the paraprofessionals. And I do have them in my classroom and I do have some that are good and some that are turds. So I think having that kind of preset agreement is great as long as you could get everybody on board. Um, do you have people that you think would take like offense to that or like, I'm not signing it. What do you think? Honestly, I hate to say this, but if you have people who are diverse to having some type of collaboration, Bye. <laughs> but, you know, if you could just have, you have to have that desire to want to work together for the kid. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess that answered your question a little bit. No, I think, I think that it's, it's a good answer. Like from a philosophy standpoint, yeah, that is how it should be. I mean, unfortunately, because we're not administrators, sometimes we do get stuck with somebody that's not so great. Um, but I think that's the idea of the, the contract in the first place. Um, at my school, they're very big on like PLN and PLC and like working with your teams. So they always have us develop like team norms and we have to like have agreement. So I think like that's kind of like my districts, like at least in the current sense, like they're equivalent kind of to that. Only I think you're... I think yours, you're talking about something even more specifically, like if we have a, a disagreement, here's how we agree to, you know, work it out, like that sort of thing. It's more of like, if I talk to this parent, you talk to this parent, like it has to be like nitty gritty, just so that it's all out there okay. and there's no like surprises. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, I, I think so. I wonder if, um, and this is what's great about maybe like your project is that you'd have sort of thought ahead to all of those things that you'd need to account for. Because mm -hmm. if I was sitting down, I might be like, hey, how do we prefer to, you know, communicate and what hours of the day are off limits? Like there'd be certain things that I would think of, but I bet there would be instances that I would not think of. So I think that's the benefit of like you having this like item or product or whatever, you know, ahead of time that people could use because you've kind of accounted for those things. Does that? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So if you're, do you have any tips for people that get paired up? Like they don't have this, the, the prenup, they don't have the contract ahead of time mm -hmm. and they got paired with just someone that's the worst like someone that's lazy and doesn't do any work and just leaves it to you. Like, what are your, do you have coping skills for teachers in a bad situation? Um, I do. <laughs> Cause that happens all the time. Um, I would just suggest like my biggest thing is that, um, and I hate to be like this person, but if you can document everything that happens, like say you just have a situation that keeps going and going, um, you need a document, whether it's email, I mean, for, you know, you know this, you never confront somebody through email. You always have a conversation verbally because I don't know about you, but I mystery text all the time. Like my husband yep. can text a one word answer and I'm like, what did I do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, but like just simple things of, if you just keep a document of, you know, this happened, yeah. So my suggestions would be that if you're having a lot of problems, 
is to talk about it as like, I, I hate confrontation. Like I absolutely hate confrontation. Like I would never do it in front of a child. Like if you have a situation where I had to actually had a teacher yell at me in front of the classroom, in front of the kids. And I was just like, I'm not doing this. If you want to talk, we can go outside, but I'm not going to do it in front of the kids because that just amps up the situation. But if you're not able to have that conversation at all, it's best to sometimes bring an administrator in that you feel comfortable with because you never want to let someone else say your side. Does that make sense? Like that happened to me before. But if you can just have some kind of conversation Mm -hmm. with them, um, a lot of times when you have, I mean, sometimes you're just, it doesn't matter how many times you have a conversation, you just keep beating a dead horse and a dead horse. I mean, it's the truth. All you can do is document and then just keep going because your main concern is more of the kid, kids in the classroom. Yeah, I I actually think that's a good thing to keep in mind that if you think of it not as like you and something is happening to you and you think about like, are we serving the kids the best we can? I do think that's super helpful. Um, I, I also find it interesting because it seems to me like And maybe this is like a, I'm in the Chicago suburbs thing. And we have this thing that we call Midwestern nice, where we don't want to say anything or, you know, create any waves. So a lot of times you get stuck with a bad teacher, you don't confront it. It's not an issue of you're up in their face. It's that you just stuff it down, stuff it down because you want to be polite and you don't say, you know, and you're just okay. And you just kind of wait, you know, and, and then what happens is it builds and then you have someone that either explodes or has like a breakdown and is like, I can't do this anymore. And then what without any warning, you know? And I think that that, that is something I think we put up with a lot until we can't put up with it anymore. And it's those kind of coping skills are hard, but I think that you had a great point when you said, if you think about it in terms of, are we helping the kids? Are we, you know, hurting, not physically, but from an education standpoint, are we hurting the kids? And if you can use that to kind of give you the courage to confront or address the situation, I think that that's pretty powerful. Well, I think a lot of times too, that you have to think about as a coping skill is you have to kind of keep yourself in check because as teachers, as wives, as mamas, as husbands, daddies, um, we have so many hats. I mean, I, I know you have a ton of hats. I like, <laughs> there's no, like, there's not a moment when I don't have something going on yeah. and I don't take care of myself. Like I'm really bad about like, not, um, I don't put myself first a lot, but when you're in the classroom, you kind of have to put yourself first in a situation because if you're not in the best state of mind, you're not going to be doing the best for the kids. So if that means that you are having troubles with someone, you might have to, See, I'm really giving this advice, but I wouldn't be able to do this. It would take me like the gulp, um, take a little of my own medicine to do it. But you would have to be able to have a conversation because at the end of the day, we're all on the same team for the kids. We just want them not even like pass the test. We just want them to understand the standards or perform you know, the mastery of something. Um, so I guess uh, we have some really good advice and ideas here. Um, I guess what's on the horizon for your project? Um, do you think it'll be a website? Do you think it'll be like a printable pdf sort of thing? And then if people have other questions, where could they reach you at? Um, I've, I'm hoping... I did, um, I got to write, um, I did a chapter in the edgy, edgy match just put out like a, a, a book at the end of the year, edgy snaps in 2019. And so I kind of wrote about collaboration. Like I did a chapter in there, to kind of get my feet wet. I, um, I'm hoping it would either be some type of document that can be like customized to a school or to a group. Um, I'm also would like to eventually maybe turn it into some type of book. Like, just, I just like to keep meeting people and talking. So I don't really know. Like, if you had told me one way, I was going to do a website, but now it's kind of gone like this. 
No, and I think it's cool because there could be different contracts depending on the situation. So it'd be like, here's a sample co-teacher contract. Here's a sample paraprofessional, you know, teacher contract. I just, I like the idea that like a school, like a whole building might adopt that sort of, of system. So that's, I'm hoping to maybe get to pilot a couple of people next, like next fall to mm-hmm. kind of really see, like get the kinks out before I kind of like turn like a final copy out. You know what I mean? To kind of mm-hmm. see like, okay, this worked. No, this didn't. Like maybe do you need to have an administrator? Maybe it needs to be a, a coach. Where can people find you if they want to reach you or ask questions or anything? Um, my Twitter is at KYGirl in Alabama. And I'm pretty good about Twitter, more so than I am on Facebook. I, the only reason I do Facebook is for my my daughters, um, for my family to see her. Yep. Um, I do Instagram. I like Twitter because I like it's short and sweet. And I like all the different connections you can make. Like, I would never have met you if it wasn't through Twitter. You know? That's a, a, Twitter's definitely my favorite, too. Yeah. I have the Instagram, and I just can't keep up with it. And I kind of loathe the Facebook, so I have, I begrudgingly have an account. Yeah, I get all mad, and I'm like, man. Be sure to subscribe to the Reset EDU channel for the latest project updates and episodes. If you're interested in a reset for your own classroom, be sure to fill out the form at bit.ly forward slash reset edu. Thank you for watching. Thank you.